Hey, how's it going everybody? Today I'm gonna go over the bottom panel of the Diva synthesizer. Now when I'm talking about the bottom panel, I'm specifically referring to the center panels, which are modifications, trimmers, scopes, and main right here. I'm not gonna be talking about the LFOs or effects. That's kind of more like the side panels. I think everybody wants to know a bit about this, this is kind of where there's a little bit of mystery about the diva, and I'm gonna be going through all of these in the most concise and clear way that I can possibly do so. Now, just real quick, I wanted to just throw out a plug. Um, I got quite a few different preset packs, really, really high quality stuff. I just made one for diva. Uh, my website link is right down below this video. And you can see all my preset packs there and take a listen and see if you're interested. I really appreciate you listening to me about that. So let's just get back to the video topic at hand. We're going to be talking about the center panel. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of start in the main section and we're going to go through there. Okay. And I'm going to kind of go by what I think is, you know, primary and then secondary and it kind of relates to um, going kind of back and forth. We're going to be bouncing around between the tabs and uh, these parts to, you know, give a little bit of examples and so forth. Okay, so let's just go ahead and start up here. Uh, first, let's look at this. Um, accuracy. Okay, this is like um, related to the sound quality and the CPU usage of the Diva. So when you go to draft, you're using the least CPU and you have the lowest sound quality. So if you have a slower computer, this is a good way to make sounds. And then as you go up, you basically increase your CPU and your sound quality. Um, the recommended technique for slower computers is basically to create everything on draft. And then when you're ready to export, you're ready to bounce. You set all your synths to divine and you bounce them out. Okay, offline accuracy, it basically is kind of like when you put it on same, when you bounce your project, it's going to be whatever's here. But when you put it on best, when you bounce your project, it's going to automatically bounce on divine. Now, um, when it comes to the modes, mono mode is basic monophonic mode. Okay, like a mono synth. Legato mode is like, uh, has to do with the envelope. So if we go to mono mode real quick, and we just... Uh, Let's switch these envelopes out to something a little more basic. Um, mono mode is kind of like a new envelope starts every single note. And then we got legato mode, which is like an envelope only starts if you release the note. Okay, so like if you don't release the note, it's playing the same envelope. Like this. Right, but if you play a new note, it restarts. Then poly mode is just polyphonic. You can play chords. Okay, duo mode is duophonic. It's like a paraphonic mode. Basically, one oscillator follows the uh, lower pitch, one follows the higher pitch. So, like right now, I only have one oscillator running. So, if I'm pressing another note it's not going to actually play. You have to have at least two oscillators. So it's like it uses the same envelope and then it like splits the oscillator between the notes while using the same envelope. And if you use three oscillators, say so you tune this one. It like treats your second note as like the other two oscillators and the first note is one oscillator. So you can kind of play around with that. It's kind of like a duophonic paraphonic mode. And it's good to use with like two oscillators and you have a clear picture. If you want to emulate like a paraphonic synthesizer. Um, I'm not going to go too far deep into like what that is. Um, this is kind of just a guide for Diva, and if you want to look up paraphony, 
and how dual phonics since work and you have a better understanding of that and play around with it, then uh, that's what I would recommend you do. Poly 2 is basically like if you're, um, it's like a polyphonic mode, but it's really cool because like on a regular polyphonic mode, when you have re longer release times, like let's make this sound a little more palatable here. release times cover each other up but when you put it on poly 2 what happens is actually like it'll play polyphonic like chords but what happens is if you're playing release times what you hear is the release time gets cut off by the next note so you can have a like a polyphonic and it's a little cleaner if you don't want those release times overlapping. It can almost be like a fake mono. Like if you want to have a mono mode uh, and only play one note at a time and then just play a chord real quick, this is a good way to do it. Uh, or if you want to use some of the polyphonic features like uh, the voices and so forth, but you want to just be able to play like mono lines, Poly 2 is the way to go. Now, when it comes to note priority, basically it only works for mono or legato. Last note priority means like basically this is the easiest and most common one to use. Whichever note you play is the one that's going to play next. So like I'm playing a lower note, then a higher note, even if I'm holding them down, it's just going to play whatever note I play. If I go to lowest, it's like... If I play a lower note and I hold it, now I'm trying to play a higher note and it's not playing. But if I play a higher note and hold it and try to play a lower note, it will play. So like, it's kind of a monophonic thing that only plays the lowest note if you're holding multiple notes down. And highest is basically backwards. So like you play the higher note and now it's not gonna play the lower note. Okay, so I'm not too sure why people use that necessarily, but it can emulate some older synth models and ways of playing. If you want to play it normal, just put it on last. And this applies again to mono, and it applies to legato. Now, um, when it comes to the voices, this is like your polyphony. Okay, and this relates to stack, and it relates to um, the number of notes you can play at once in a chord. So if you only have like, let's say two voices, this is a minimum for polyphonic. Okay, when you go to poly mode, for example, and I play a chord, it will let me play two notes at a time. But if I play three, it's only playing two notes of that chord. It won't let me play three notes. So you get a, like a two voice polyphonic synthesizer and this can go all the way up to 16 voices. Now keep in mind that the more voices you have, the more CPU that you use. So if you start running high on CPU, it's a good time to turn down your accuracy or something like that. Okay. Now, um, that's that. And then stack, this has to do with like, Stack is like you're using up whatever number of voices to basically double your current line or triple or quadruple it, whatever. So if you have two voices, you put stack two, you're using two like layers of oscillators. It's like playing the same note twice, like at the same time. Now, if you're, let's turn this a little bit like this, back to... Now you'll notice it's basically for creating a bigger, more detuned sound, okay? And this goes into this voices page. That's why I said I'm gonna bounce around a little bit. When you go in the voices, okay, basically like, um, let me go back to stack one. You'll see in poly mode, when these lights light up like consecutively, you're using a different voice, okay, like this. And it kind of, right now we're on two, Voices is just using the first two. 
But if you go to voices, let's say six, it's going to use six. Sorry, I keep clicking the wrong thing here. Okay, that's using six voices. All right, now if we go to stack two, it's actually um, using two at a time. And what happens is the voices in Diva are kind of detuned naturally, and you get a, like a fatter sound naturally, okay? So like if we're using, let's say stack two, and um, we have six voices, like I play a three note chord, it's gonna be playing six voices. You see that? And if you only put stack one, you're playing three voices. And if you put, uh, let's say you play a three note chord, and uh, put stack three, three notes, you need nine voices. And then you go here. See how it's like doubling? You're like hitting, it's got like eight, and then you're doubling this one as a ninth. So really, this has got um, eight times two, which is 16, which is your maximum voices. See that? What kind of um, going through there now? The doubling on one means like that voice is being repeated twice, and they sure each settings per voice. Okay, so like basically the easy way to think about the stacks without going too much excessively into it is that it like doubles the oscillators in your synth and it gives you a more detuned sound and like a big uh, I don't want to say bigger like bigger is always better it just gives you like more oscillators like a Moog only has like if you're running a monophonic Moog you only have like three oscillators but when you stack it it's like you got a Moog with six oscillators instead of three okay now there's a little trick here too. One of the things you can use this for other than just having a more detuned sound is you can actually use it to make like those kind of chords, like the chords that move around like old like uh, techno house music, for example. Let's say we go to stack two and we're using two voices. Uh, you see the stack tune? This goes up to six, okay? So, Basically, when we're stacking the second one, we can detune this out like this. And you can see it up here how much is detuning it out. So like if you detune less than one, you're just creating more detune. Like more of a unison sound. Okay, like I only have one oscillator running. You're getting the sound of two oscillators detuned by the stack tune and again i'm kind of going through this in a concise quick way and it's up to you to kind of play around and experiment with it so i don't because i'm trying to avoid spending an excessive amount of time on the features uh, more than it needs to be just to let you know how it works so then you can experiment with it yourself so when you go to tune once you go above here above one you're starting to detune by semitones so like right now you see, I'm detuning by about 3.08. So I'm going to have one semitone of regular and one semitone at 3.08 higher. See, now you're getting those kind of chords. Now if you put stack three, you're stacking three voices at once. Your third one is regular. Your first one's regular. And your second one is it 3.08? Let's tune the this one to let's say five. Okay. Or like tune it to seven, a fifth. So this is really cool for like house chords and techno chords. Uh, you make these stacks, you could get really big chords. And then like, you know, play around with the patch and stuff. And like, uh, you know, you can like detune them more here. Like, let's say I'm doing a fifth and then like I'm doubling that whole thing again with the chord detunes and like. See about that? That's pretty cool, right? 
So that's how the stack works and the voice detuning and all that. I just kind of reset it so I don't get screwed up later. All right, so that's this whole panel here. Then um, let's go into the tuning section. This vibrato basically works like this. It's automatically hooked to LFO1. You see it says here vibrato, okay? And LFO1, this indicates that it's automatically hooked up to the mod wheel. Okay, so just to play it in a kind of a default way, right now, if I go, I play like a, and I turn up the mod wheel, it doesn't have any effect. But this basically gives you just a built-in vibrato with one knob using whatever is on this LFO. So when I turn this up, I play a note now, there's no effect. But if I use the mod wheel, and that's just like a straightforward vibrato effect. Okay. Now, when it comes to... Um, I'm gonna go through the transposition real quick, and then I'll go through the glide functions. Transposition, fine tuning, this is uh, just basically, you know, tuning the synthesizer uh, up and down by a semitone, and transpose is up and down by, you know, like 36 semitones. Now, people might say, why do you want to um, transpose and fine tune your master synthesizer? You know, I heard this on a video once. Oh, why would you want to do that? Well, it's pretty simple. Basically, the way it works is like, let me run oscillator 2. And let's say I'm starting to do something like FM. I got a tuner automatically built in. See, it says here B. Let me switch to a more smoother sound, maybe. So you see, by inserting FM, it's screwed up my tonality of my synth. So now everything I play is going to be out of key. Okay, especially if I'm kind of using a tonal FM and I want to continue to play in key, then I use this tune and I bring this up and then I do the transpose. Right now my um, uh, MIDI is tuned like three semitones down. So if I play A on my keyboard, that should give me F sharp, which is a regular note here. So I would, I'm playing high, so I'll transpose it down. Uh, one, two, three, four, five semitones. Now I'm back in key using FM. So that's why you want to use that kind of transposition. Okay, let me kind of get rid of that. Get rid of this FM. All right. See, I got rid of rid of everything and I have to uh, get rid of this detuning now I'm back okay there we go so that's how that works okay um, now up and down one and two uh, this little number here is basically how far the pitch bend goes so right now it's two semitones which is pretty good for like standard pitch bend but if you want to do more, like you can go up seven, down seven. Basically, that's how that works. Okay. Now, when it comes to the um, micro tuning, there's micro tuning means like that there's ways that you can tune your synthesizer uh, that is not like a standard piano. And there's different ways here that are like using some funky tunings that are like uh, either experimental or you can get like ethnic tunings based on, um, you know, different ethnicities and cultures and instruments and so forth that are not uh, regular Western pianos. So then you can get like, if you're using more experimental sounds, you can get some really cool effects. Or like uh, you can create your own tunings on some websites like I've created one called analog one and two. And basically what that does is like, you know, I've owned multiple analog synths, and when I play them, especially like when you go to mono mode, you're always kind of playing um, just one voice and that can give you a lot of stability, but without the micro tuning, 
your pitch is basically always the same. And when I've owned analog synthesizers, different notes are like knocked around the octave a little bit. Now this is kind of a trick to make your diva sound more analog right here. So different notes are knocked around the octave. So I've created a couple micro tuning scales to emulate that. So when I turn this on, see it kind of jumps up and down a little bit, bass per note. Right? That's kind of emulating more closer to like a retro analog synthesizer. That's the reason why I did that. So that's micro tuning. Okay. Now we'll go to glide. Basically the way the glide works is like a uh, glide is portamento. So I'm not going to really explain all the technicalities of portamento, but um, the way that it works in Diva is like, this is your portamento knob glide. So when you have it at zero, there's no glide. And uh, when you put it up, you get that sliding between the notes. And when this is in mono, you get it sliding all the time. No matter how you play. But when it's in legato, if you play separate notes, you don't get sliding. And if you play uh, notes that are together, you do. And that's kind of how synths with legato work, like analog synthesizers. And that's the time. Now, before I go into glide two and range, I'm going to go to glide mode. This is very useful right here. Okay, uh, let me just kind of get rid of this whole envelope thing going on here. Get a stable sound. Okay. The range, the way that this works is when you have it set there, like you can have it set to rate or time. When you have it set to rate, when notes are closer together, you see, you can hear how fast that glides. It's pretty quick. When they're far apart, you get a longer glide. It's not like, but if you go to time, this is a more standard portamento actually, is time. Then when you glide them around, that's one speed. And when you go long, it's, it's the same speed. So it's not based on notes, it's based on your time. Okay, so those are two different kinds of portamentos. And when you use it, rate, it can be a, more useful in some ways. It depends on how you want to do it. Because like basically it's intended like if you want to create a big glide effect, like you see, like I can have that big glide. And then when I'm playing closer notes together, it's not giving me that it's giving me a shorter time. So it lets me make like a big glide effect followed by like notes played closer together that are like, you know, more workable and adjustable uh, versus just having a long time all the time, uh, which would be like this. And then it'd be like, let me turn it to a long time. So then if I played notes closer together, see, I don't get that kind of like adjustment. I still get the long glide. So that's a really cool feature in Diva. Now we're going to cover this glide two and this range. Okay. So basically the way this works is glide is your standard glide, like, uh, your portamento time. Let's kind of put this back to rate like default. Okay. Now if glide two works for oscillators too. If you have a two oscillator, um, oscillator, uh, module or two and three together if you have something like the Moog with three oscillators. And what it does is it just gives you a separate glide time uh, offset by whatever this is up or down. So like, let me just play one oscillator here. Go back to the saw. Now, let's say I want to play two oscillators. But let's say I want that second oscillator to glide slower than the first. Then I offset it to slower. Uh, 
and this will work together. The both two and three are treated as one. So basically, it's like uh, you know. And let's say I want it faster. Okay, so that's what that does. Now the last thing with the glide here is this range. Basically what the range does is it's a little diva exclusive trick that kind of plays around with your glide. Like it, it gives you a less standard glide, but it can be useful. Uh, like your regular glide like this. When you turn the range down, it puts the notes like closer together. Like the initiate, the start of the glide, like is actually closer to like your next note basically. And like when you put it all the way down, there's no space. So you actually lose the glide completely. And it just has a unique sound to it. Like check it out. Like, um, gives you like a faster glide in a way. Cause it actually starts a glide like halfway up. Like if you have this at halfway, the glide starts at like halfway to your next note rather than starting fully range from your start note to your next note. And the closer you bring this down, the closer the glide actually starts to your final note. So like rather than doing this, if I bring this down like this, I get something like, And as you see, you get an interesting effect right there. Um, so you can play around with that. That's something to play around with. Let's go to amplifier and pan. Uh, this volume right here, this is um, like a VCA volume. This is different than your output up here. This is like a regular, like digital volume, like a digital volume control for a plugin. And this is an emulation of an analog VCA volume, which actually means that like, when you have it down, like around the default area, like right here or something, it's, it's like pretty straightforward, the way that is like a clean sound. But when you turn it up, it makes it louder. So you might have to turn it down here, but it overdrives the sound. It's like overdriving the VCA. It's not so much distorted as it is like hard on the ears. like. In in the way that like uh, if you play a bass line with a lot of overdrive, you won't notice like a fat distortion. But when you play it in the mix, it's gonna like cut through in a very solid way, and they can actually cut through too much where it sounds blocky and like weird. So like or if you want a smooth sound, you don't want necessarily like that overdrive. So you kind of have to play with it. You know, there's like a right amount based on what kind of sound you're using. Normal is kind of like down here, then slight overdrive is here. This is more heavier. Panning, just pan left and right. Pretty straightforward. And then volume mod. Now, oh, by the way, the VCA, you have two options for it. Envelope one is default, which means like this envelope one always controls your VCA. Or you can go to gate, which is like in like Juno synthesizers, for example, where it only has one envelope uh, when you or like the SH-101. When you put the gate, this gives you like a flat organ envelope like this for the VCA. OK, like uh, let's say I go to envelope one and I set it like this. Now I go to gate and I change this. See, you don't hear that anymore. Just that same kind of like this shape like that, like an organ. But the way that's useful is like, if you're gonna use envelope one for your filter, for example, like a Juno or some other kind of synthesizer like this, you can set this to gate and you can uh, set your envelope to your filter. Turn this glide down. Then you get a... Uh, you get a sort of uh, uh, like a full open VCA with any shape filter you want. 
And if you set this to envelope one, this was going to control your output. And it's going to give you like a smaller sound if that's what you want or you don't want. A lot of times gate like this is used, you want to get a pluck, but you want it to still have all that bass and fullness. Um, like a bass line or something. You get it uh, more like that with gate. So that's basically how that works. You can look up how the Juno hardware envelope works if you want to know more about that kind of function. Okay, so now we're going to cover this volume mod. And basically what this does is like, it's like an additional way to modulate the volume. And um, the the way that this works is like, you pick a controller here, okay? And um, you, when you pick the controller here, then that modulates the volume. And it's kind of like works in tandem with this one. So you can't like put this down and then put an envelope and then bring it back up, unfortunately. Um, you kind of have to, this is like your base VCA volume. So, but this creates like vibrato, like not vibrato, I'm sorry, like tremolo. For example, let's say you put like a LFO2 on it, like this. Let's get rid of this glide real quick. And, uh, okay, LFO2. You see what I'm saying? Uh, stack index is basically like um, whatever this, whatever this uh, stack is like um when you have the stacks you remember there one two three so like uh let's go to pan mod and you go to stack index and then if you had a stack like this like let's say you had two stack like a basic one and then you tune one so you can hear it easily like three semitones and one uh to regular there's your chord so since you have this on stack index it actually like when you bring it up you're getting one on one side and one on the other side. So like your stack is like being basically modulating this and you get panning based on like your tones. Like you get one on one side, one on the other. And once you start like getting into three and four and stuff, it kind of spreads it out basically. All right, that's how that works. And uh, when it goes to volume mod, stack index can be useful because um, you put stack index if you're running a stack like four, for example, and or let's say we run a stack of three, and then we go here and we have a one at three, and we have one here at seven. Uh, so one th zero three seven. Then the way this works is like um, let's put this as zero. This volume mod is being modulated by a stack index, so like by this becomes like a rotating kind of selector knob for which one is the loudest and this can be really useful in giving you tonalities in like shifting through the volume of your stack so like let's say this is a chord where they're all the same volume now i bring this down this plays the higher notes louder and when you bring it up it plays the lower notes louder So if you have like a big stack, you can kind of like have a selector switch. Like is my lower ones uh, up? Like are the first ones louder or are the later ones louder? You know, and you can kind of um, have a variety to that sound and not always have that like flat stack where they're all the same volume. Now, um, the last thing I'll just go to real quick is, um, is the arpeggiator. A uh, very basic clock, you have your speed, like 8, 16, 32 quarter, okay, Mul then um, let's turn this on, mode, up, uh, played, down, up, down, so basically this gives you different patterns, so like this mode up means like it just goes up progressively whatever notes you're holding, and octaves here, you have a selection of how many octaves. Uh, okay, now multiply. Uh, that just basically offsets the speed of your uh, arpeggiator if you want to kind of 
speed it up, not sync to the clock or slow it down. Swing just gives you a little bit of swing or a lot. Okay, if you have like a swing function in your song or something, that can be useful. Um, as far as this like mode, played is like however you played the notes first, like I play it then, and so it's gonna do that arpeggio. Up it goes all the way up, down goes down, up down one, up down two. They're just different patterns, kind of that have different. You know, they have different things to them, and then random is just random. All right. Uh, then this, uh, let's go back to like up, for example, then you go to progression, uh, serial just me. These are like ways of playing serials. Like, uh, you can especially hear it when you set it like octaves three, it just goes, um, in succession and you go to round goes up and down like that octaves leap. It like plays one note per each octave and then goes to the next note per each octave and so forth. So it's just another kind of pattern and repeat. It does that kind of pattern. Okay, and then basically restart is like, um, he tells the arpeggiator like, um, none is like a default and then if you want to set it to like play a certain number of notes before it restarts this can give you like four four meter three four you know five four different things like that like if you have four and you play like this then i can play like a four four type of thing with only three notes or i go to like five so you can play around with that and that's basically how that works so that's the whole lower panel so um i hope you enjoyed that tutorial if you found it useful please like subscribe and again you check out the sound packs uh preset packs for diva and other synths in the description i uh, really appreciate everything and have a great day